Hello everybody. This pair hasn't shown any definite signs of pairing up yet, but I did see the cockbird crowing last night. So that's a good sign. He might be getting ready, and these guys might pair up soon. I'm really hoping they do because I would love to see the babies out of this pair. This guy is nice and tame. It's probably because we handled him so much as a young bird. He doesn't really have any fear and he likes to come up to the door and say hello. But guys, before we take a look at all the birds, I would like to encourage you to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. If you do press subscribe today, let me know in the comments and I'll put a heart on your comment. Alright, let's have a look at the rest of the birds. I thought today, whilst we're waiting on all the pairs to lay eggs, it is still about five or six days before we can expect all of our pairs here to lay eggs. So I thought, whilst we're waiting on them, today we'll take a look at the birds in the breeding setup and run through their family trees, look who they're related to, and talk about how some of our current breeding birds are related to other birds you've seen on the channel in the past. We're already down here, so we may as well start with these guys. You of course don't need any history about this hen. She is the sister of one of the most famous pigeons on YouTube at the moment. That is of course Kurt Maney's shock. There was a whole video devoted to his family. So if you'd like a detailed history of her, just check out that video. But her grandfather, of course, is the red checker in the box above her. A nice black boy. He actually grew up on this channel a few months ago. You guys would have enjoyed watching this guy from when he was an egg, right up until he was weaned. But you might not know that the old black cockbird with the giant nose is actually his grandfather. So there is a chance that in a couple of years when this guy's a bit older, he might have a giant wattle on his nose as well and people will be asking questions about him. But not only is he the grandfather of our young little black cock, this guy is also the father of the two black pied hens that were also sent over to Kurt. One of them was a little too strong and was let out a bit too late and unfortunately she got a bit lost. But the other one is still over there in Kurt's flying loft and I've read all your comments. She's also pretty popular over there. A lot of you are saying that Kurt needs to breed from her. But I actually hope he gets to race her. I'm looking forward to seeing how she goes. The Almond Hen isn't really related to anybody else. She's one I picked up a year or so ago. But again, we're looking forward to the babies that come out of her. Then we have our Red Checkers and this beautiful guy sitting in the nest bowl. Not only is he the grandfather of the hen I showed you earlier, you might remember he's also the father of the first split barless bird we bred. The beautiful big blue checker split for barless that I showed you a week or so ago and you also saw growing up on the channel. And then we also have his hen, who I haven't bred from before, so you guys haven't seen any relations of her. Speaking of barless though, here's the barless hen herself. And she's paired up to this nice dark checker. One thing I love about this Barless hen is just how aggressive she is. She's only been in this box for a couple of days. She's already claimed it completely as her own and will not let me in. I tried to clean it earlier and I got a good whacking for my trouble. She does not want me to be in here. But the Dark Checker cock that she's paired up to at the moment, if you remember way back about six or seven months ago, you might remember that she was originally paired up to a very, very old Dark Checker. And unfortunately he was a little too old to fertilize the eggs, so she didn't get any babies through him. But the cock she's with at the moment is his son. And the son had almost as much success as a race bird as the old father did, so I'm sure this will be a good match. Now I didn't actually breed this grizzle, my grandfather bred this one. And his parents were just two plain grizzles, who just happened to carry a recessive opal. And that's how this strange and wonderful colour appeared. But the hen I've got him with is who I'd like to talk about at the moment. I haven't really spoken about this hen much on the channel, but she's actually the mother of the two black hens who I was breeding with before I moved to this house. So one of them was paired up to this guy, and the other one was paired up to the really cranky opal cock who used to constantly attack us. But this nice quiet hen was the mother of the two black girls. There is also another race winning cock who I'm planning on pairing her up to maybe later in the year or next year as another step in our spread recessive opal project. That is a project that's been going on for a, a bit longer than I'm hoping for now. I'm losing a bit of patience with that project because we still haven't got a spread recessive opal. I thought it would take about one year, maybe two, and it's getting into its third year now. But we're gonna bring a new bird into it soon and hopefully that'll give us a little bit of luck. 
and then of course we have the reds and a lot of you guys are happy to see these ones now I didn't breed either of these birds and I haven't bred from them yet so they don't have many relations that I can talk about but this guy, the cockbird he's also related to the cranky opal cock who we've done a little bit of breeding with they were both bred by the same breeder and shipped down from uh, North Queensland in Australia down to me in Sydney and again we're really looking forward to seeing some nice red babies out of these guys It was only one or two videos ago that I showed you that I picked up these nest felts and already I think I can say I'm not very happy with them. I don't think I'll use them again. The main thing I don't like is just all this fluff that's coming out of the felt. It uh, gets a little bit tangled around the bird's toes and if you've ever seen wild pigeons, you know just how dangerous it is for them to get string or twine or anything caught around their toes and I really don't want any of these guys to get an injury like that. So I think in the future I'm definitely just going to carry on with the pine needles or the straw. I'm not going to bother with the nest felts anymore. I am still feeding pellets even though there's no babies yet. And that's for two reasons. The first is just there's a little bit less mess and wastage when they're fed on pellets. And the second is of course they're going to be raising their babies on pellets. So I would like them to get used to it now rather than when the babies arrive because we don't want the babies to miss a feed just because the birds aren't quite used to what I'm feeding them. You're so tame. I'm gonna have to be careful with you. <laughs> Otherwise one day you might just jump out and we'll lose you. This guy has unfortunately never been trained to fly, so if he gets out, that'll be the last we see of him. Such a nice looking black pigeon though, and he's very tame. I'm happy we handled him as a baby. It's nice having birds. Because it's really nice having birds so comfortable being around people. I really like it. Anyway guys, that's all for today. I hope you've enjoyed this little update. And I'll see you in a few days. If the Barless Hen hasn't killed me first. See you later, guys.